You're not getting any of tonight's pot roast. Here, eat this instead. Here you go. Ugh, but this is... Leftover soup and salad from two days ago. It might have gone bad, but you can handle it, right? Don't be wasteful. Eat up. I don't want to waste good meat on you. I can't eat this. What was that? Leftovers are perfect for you. Stop complaining and eat up. My mother-in-law always directs such nastiness towards me. She's so obnoxious, it just gets under my skin. My name is Mary, a 27-year-old woman juggling both work and home responsibilities. I got married only a year ago, so I don't have any kids yet. Right now, we're living with my husband's family in their house. I never wanted to live with my in-laws, but since my husband is the eldest son, we didn't have much choice. I thought it was ridiculous to live with my in-laws in this day and age, but both my husband and my mother-in-law hold on to old-fashioned values. Moreover, my father-in-law is no longer with us, and my husband expressed his concern for his mother. I have no idea what he's worried about, she's still so full of life. My brother-in-law is single and working overseas, so I guess that's just how it has to be. But I still hate it. Now, even my husband has started being mean to me, following in his mother's footsteps. He never said anything mean before we got married, but his attitude changed drastically. I feel deceived. He's always acting superior, and he always yells at me. It gives me a headache. Hey you! Why is my shirt so wrinkled? Huh? Is it wrinkled? Yeah! I'll be embarrassed at work like this. Can't you even iron properly? Why can't you do something so simple? No, I did iron it. Your properly is not proper at all. Realize that. What a useless wife you are. <laughs> That's so mean. You don't have to say it like that. Are you talking back to me? Your face is as wrinkled as this shirt. And you're annoying. Seriously, you look older than you are. It's a turnoff. <laughs> oh, really? Before we got married, he used to call me adorable. He treated me like a princess. But now, he insults my appearance and laughs about it. I don't understand why he would say such a thing. I'm not wrinkled or anything. It crossed my mind that he's actually balding for his age. I even found myself wishing that he would go completely bald one day. Our marriage is still pretty new, but I'm concerned about the future. Sometimes the word divorce even flashes through my mind. I was exhausted every day, and once I finished the housework after getting home from work, I felt like I was about to collapse. But my mother-in-law never helped with the chores. She seems to spend her whole day blankly watching TV. There were crumbs from snacks on the floor in front of the TV, and a lot of them. I had to clean them up, and I wish she would at least use a plate. Then, after dinner one day, my mother-in-law started to speak. Hey, let's all go to a spa resort when the new year comes. Oh, that sounds great. All right, I'll make the reservation. I'll get on it first thing tomorrow. Thanks, Mom. My husband and mother-in-law seemed very happy. I didn't really want to go with these people, but I was interested in the spa resort itself. I love visiting spa resorts, and this one was famous enough to be featured on TV recently. I thought it could be a great memory if I could ignore these annoying people. So inside, I was actually excited. After this, my mother-in-law said she had something to discuss. I wondered what it was and headed to the living room. You know, we only have a small car, right? So I was hoping we could borrow your family's minivan. After all, we can load lots of luggage in it. Alright, I guess. My father has both a minivan and a small car. He usually commutes in the small car and uses the minivan for shopping trips or camping, which is his hobby. When I called my father, he readily agreed to lend it to us. With that, we welcomed the end of the year vacation. I had to clean the house, so it was again incredibly busy. However, thinking that a spa resort was waiting for me after getting through this year-end period helped me push through. As expected, my mother-in-law wouldn't move from the sofa. She laid there all the time, looking like a statue. Then the morning of New Year's Day arrived. I woke up thinking about the long-awaited spa resort, but was surprised when I looked at the alarm clock. I had overslept. What? It's already 8.30? But David isn't here. Why? My husband, who should have been sleeping next to me, wasn't there either. I thought he might be in the bathroom, but he wasn't. Huh? Where is everyone? Did they go somewhere? 
I peeked into my mother-in-law's bedroom, but she wasn't there either. I began to wonder if they left without me. In a panic, I checked my smartphone. I always charge my phone in the living room before going to bed. There was a text notification on my smartphone. It was from my mother-in-law. We're going to have fun! We never booked a place for you! You can spend a lonely new year. It's okay if the bride doesn't come. So my mother-in-law never intended to take me with them from the start. And she planned to enjoy it with my husband. I was really sad. At the same time, I was also very angry. It's terrible to deliberately stop my alarm clock to make me oversleep. And I suspect the reason she made me drink a lot of alcohol the night before was to make me pass out. I regretted drinking that much. Although it's a relief that she didn't drug me, I was irritated about her pushing drinks on me. Well, there's nothing I can do, even if I get angry. So I decided to enjoy myself alone, at home. I really wanted to go home to my parents, but they're also away on a trip by plane, so it's pointless to go back. So I ordered a pizza for delivery that day, and spent a lonely day. Then my mother-in-law and husband returned from their trip. They had broad smiles on their faces. It was so fun! It was the best! I want to stay there again! Of course, without you, Mary! Mm. Here, this is a souvenir. What is this? It's a stone I found lying around. It suits you perfectly. Oh, is that so? I couldn't help but think that my mother-in-law was extremely spiteful. Frustrated, I went to return the minivan to my parents' house. I thought they would be home by now. When I arrived at my parents' house, my father came to greet me. Did you enjoy the spa resort? That famous spa should have been quite satisfying. I didn't go because I'm the bride. What? I was told by my mother-in-law that it's fine if the bride doesn't come. I was left behind. When I woke up in the morning, no one was there. What? After that, my father started to do something. Then, he had me sit in the passenger seat of the minivan and started driving. The car was headed back to my in-laws' house. When I glanced at my father's face as he drove, he seemed to be angry. Well, any father would get angry if their daughter was treated that way. But I was taken aback because I had never seen such a look on my usually calm father's face. Then, my father stormed into my in-laws' house with something in his hand. My mother-in-law came out. Oh, hello, and Happy New Year! Sorry for borrowing your minivan. Happy New Year. Speaking of which, you left our daughter behind, didn't you? No, Mary said she had a fever and couldn't go, so we had to leave her behind reluctantly. I even offered to take care of her. My mother-in-law was lying through her teeth with a smirk on her face. She definitely never said anything like that, and I wasn't even sick with a cold. I wondered how she could tell such an obvious lie. I thought something must be wrong with her brain. Oh, really? But our daughter said she was left behind. She told us she received a message on text saying, It's fine if the bride doesn't come. Did I say that? I don't remember. You did. Look at this text. I showed her the text messages. However, she still insisted she was innocent. I was surprised at how thick-skinned she was to still deny it, even cornered this far. In a sense, it was admirable. You're still saying that, huh? You're truly a sad person. Oh, by the way, can I charge you for the cleaning of the car interior? What? Why? Because you dirtied it. With a married man, nonetheless. What a filthy and disgusting scene. Wh what are you talking about? This right here. It was captured by this dual camera. What my father had in his hand was a dash cam. This one has dual cameras, so it can record not only the outside, but also the inside of the car. The advantage of being able to record the inside of the car is that it can provide evidence that you were driving safely. My mother-in-law doesn't know much about car supplies or cars in general, so there's a chance she didn't realize this was a dual camera. But what was she doing with a married man in the first place? I regretted watching the footage that my father played back. After all, there were images of my mother-in-law in an indecent posture and an unknown man. Even though my father-in-law is no longer in this world, it's insane to do such a thing with a married man. 
And what on earth was she doing in our family car? This was on the exact day you borrowed the car. Ugh, how disgusting. Wait, wait! This doesn't mean we were doing anything dirty! It's not something perverted! My mother-in-law was in a panic, fumbling and stammering on the spot. Tears welled up in her eyes. She was on the brink of crying. I found myself curious and somewhat amused about when she would finally break down. Maybe I'm being cruel, but after all the time she tormented me, she deserves this much. I couldn't be sympathetic or kind to someone like her. Then, she began making pathetic excuses. Her reasoning was all over the place. It was clear she was flustered. Yet, she was desperate to defend herself. Suddenly, my father pulled another item from his pocket. It was a photograph. The picture showed my mother-in-law and the man from the video engaged. In a sordid act in broad daylight, it was unthinkable. The background of the picture suggested it took place somewhere secluded, but the audacity to do this in the daytime was still shocking. You wouldn't have seen these if you hadn't been mean to my dear Mary. Wh- Why do you have that picture? Because I'm a detective, remember? Oh... Do you recall now? Look, I've been telling you this all along, haven't I? My father is a detective, which explains why he had such a photograph. Coincidentally, the wife of the married man in the picture had hired him for an infidelity investigation. It turns out the wife of this man hired me to investigate her husband's affair. I was surprised to discover you were the other woman. I was going to inform her next week, but I didn't expect to show you this so soon. Huh. <sighs> no, I'm innocent. I was just forced into an unpleasant situation. I am not at fault. Please, don't tell his wife. Huh? It was against your will, was it? You seem to be enjoying yourself. We also have video footage of you whispering sweet words to the man. Do you want to see it? Uh, uh, I'm sorry. My mother-in-law collapsed to her knees and burst into tears. I watched her in a pitiful state, with a cold glare. Sensing the unusual situation, my husband arrived. I had run out of patience with him too, and I proposed a divorce. I've had enough. I want to end this. Let's get divorced. What? I'll go crazy if I stay in this horrible family any longer, so I'm leaving. Hold on! What will happen to our living expenses if you leave? Huh? I, I, I was fired a while ago. My husband dropped a bombshell. Apparently, he had been fired at the end of the year. I was taken aback as he had not told me this. Despite knowing his job was terminated, he had still decided to go on a spa resort trip. He was a complete fool. I felt I had no choice but to divorce him. I took off my wedding ring and left it there. My husband desperately tried to stop me. Wait, can't you forgive me for not taking you on the spa resort trip? It's not just about the trip. I don't want to be with you or your mother anymore. If you want to live with your mother that much, then go ahead, you mama's boy. Please wait. Don't go. I got a lawyer and proceeded with the divorce. My ex-husband seems to be having trouble managing his living expenses now that I'm gone. I thought he should find a new job quickly, but having been fired from his last job for theft, he'll probably struggle to find a new one. His previous company had fired him because he had been caught stealing. Apparently, they decided they couldn't trust him and didn't need someone like that. Unsurprisingly, the wife of my mother-in-law's lover demanded compensation for the affair. She ended up spending all the money left by my father-in-law to settle the payment. I haven't seen my ex-husband or ex-mother-in-law since, but I imagine they're probably living a hard life. It doesn't matter to me anymore. Currently, I'm living alone and enjoying my work. I made the right decision not to have a child with my ex-husband. Now, I am enjoying a peaceful life and would be happy if I found a new love. If such an opportunity arises, I plan to make sure to choose wisely.